Hello and welcome to the Fish Keeper Show, a webcast covering how-to for the breeding and raising of tropical freshwater fish. I'm your host, Tim Stanton. And I'm Jeremy Bosch. This show is to provide a path to achieving success in the breeding of and raising of tropical fish. As in any journey, there's many ways to reach the same destination. This is true with tropical fish breeding. The methods described here are one way to achieve success. This episode is an introduction to uh, fish species such as live bears, barbs, danios, tetras, old world and new world cichlids, killifish of all kinds, uh, catfish, and loaches too. Each show will have an introduction to a family of fish. We will also focus on fish species inside of each family as well. The show will also cover information on natural environments of fish species and their captive care. We also cover diet, fry care, and breeding tips that we've learned along the way. And in the end, it's best to learn as much as you can about each species of fish before you purchase them. Uh, replicating the natural environment is a goal. Uh, decide on a, fr a fish species first. There's often confusion in the hobby in terms of words and terms. We assume everybody that is watching has a general knowledge of some of the terms that we are going to use. Basic terms such as pH, acid, neutral, alkaline, hardness both KH and GH, temperature, ammonia, nitrate and nitrate. Also we'll discuss scientific names, you know, a scientific name versus a common name. Um, family, genus, and species. You should have a general knowledge of those as well. We'll also take a look at the uh, fish's environment. Freshwater fish live in swampy areas, streams, rivers, lakes, other small bodies of water. There's different types of rivers. Clear, white water, black water. Each have their own effects on the fish that are kept there. Clear water streams or rivers have plenty of variety of parameters. Their pH can range from 5 to 8, depending on the mineral content, calcium, gypsum, etc., found in the local soil. Whitewater streams and rivers are known for having heavy sediment loads, which uh, high hardness, which can be more neutral to alkaline. Blackwater streams and rivers have high tannins uh, by released by tree leaves and other organic matter. Uh, due to the high organic matter, blackwater streams have a hardness have a very low hardness and low pH. And then also some fish species come from lakes and lakes are dependent upon mineral content as well. Um, for instance, Lake Malawi and Lake Tanganyika, they have a high mineral content so they have a high hardness and a high pH as well. Um, we can also, we all may also look at swampy areas, flooded areas, uh, streams that and rivers that have become flooded during um, you know, recent storms, uh, such as the Amazon Basin or even parts of Africa where the rivers overflow and, and flood um, certain areas of, of, the, uh, of the, um, the land. And then also, of course, there's temporary pools, which you sometimes encounter after rains, heavy rains. Um, typically, you'll find uh, Achilles and, and smaller fish species in those pools. Mm -hmm. And the goal of any fish keeper is to try to replicate that natural environment. Uh, it's one of the keys in keeping and spawning new fish. Uh, you also need to decide on a tank size. Uh, and for example, a, a larger fish such as an Oscar is going to need a much greater size tank than perhaps even a small tetra or some other top minnow. Uh, you also need to decide on such things as the, the heater, the filter, decorations. Uh, for decorations, uh, most freshwater ecosystems have uh, some sort of uh, substrate such as a sand, clay, even mud bottoms, uh, smooth stones, wood branches. Uh, people often use drift wood, driftwood and leaves. Sometimes even algae and plants are suitable. Uh, research for a, research a specific uh, species to know the environment, the ecosystem, to decide what's right for your fish. And we'd also like to share with you what we consider the eight possible breeding triggers for fish. Such triggers include changes in water temperature, direction of change, um, you know, is dependent upon the species, such as corridors, like a lower uh, water temperature to encourage them to spawn, 
while certain species of fish um, may actually enjoy warmer water, warmer conditions uh, to bring on breeding. Uh, changes in water depth sometimes will play a factor in that. If you're dealing with a fish species that comes from, that are used to dealing with rainy conditions, uh, the levels in the water may change. Changes in feeding, availability of food may increase or decrease for the fish, and when it increases, they're more likely to spawn as well. Uh, also, changes in tank mates, sometimes separating uh, male and female or even putting them in an environment where they're separate from all other fish species can, uh, can help with that. That's right, Jeremy. Uh, and we also need to take a look at changes in the water quality. Uh, if, it's a, if it's a fish from an uh, area of the world where there's a red, rainy season, uh, that means uh, uh, resulting fresh water, changes in pH, uh, and that's going to be matching the environment the fish are from, and that may trigger uh, spawning. Also consider changes in lighting, increase in day and light uh, length also can have a factor on certain fish. Uh, changes in tank decor, such as the addition of java, java moss for egg scatterers, or small clay flower pots or PVC pipes for uh, cave egg depositors, such as catfish or key. In, in essence, the healthy ecosystem in the aquarium and pond is what's going to trigger uh, nice algae and uh, uh, proper bacteria for the uh, proper care and quality of, of your fish. Now, when you're dealing with types of food, we recommend that you use fresh foods. Uh, live foods are really great, frozen. Uh, so, you know, when um, consulting things, when it comes down to it, fresh foods are the best thing to use. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, uh, keep in mind, uh, there are several live foods that uh, we definitely recommend. Uh, First, let's take a look at worms. There are such things as black worms, white worms, grindle worms, earthworms, beetle larvae, uh, even mosquito larvae, brine shrimp, uh, daphnia, whole shrimp uh, from whether fresh water or from the ocean. Even for some things such as ants and crickets, uh, even small white fish, vegetable matter such as squash, peas, and lettuce are all possible f uh, foods for your fish. Mm -hmm. And the key to in conditioning a fish species is to know what the fish species eats in the wild and providing that in captivity typically the more variety the better for the fish they're going to get all the nutrients and vitamins that they need for uh, for breeding purposes to to produce the um, you know the qualities of life that will allow them to, to spawn that's right so and then once you have your fry then you need to decide what's the proper fry food for those uh, baby fish they're going to require, in some cases, parental care, where you keep the uh, the parent or parents in uh, uh, with the, the fry. Others you're going to separate, and you're going to have to be the caregiver. And that's where key hus husbandry comes into play. Uh, you know, it could be, uh, for an easier group of fish, it, you might be uh, talking about live bear, some cichlids, and catfish. Mm-hmm. And removing the offspring is the best thing for, you know, the best, produces the best results. And as Tim was saying, you know, some fish species will provide care, especially in the form of the, the cichlids and the catfish and, and bettas, but typically uh, they're on their own once, once they hatch. So we need to be able to provide them with some sort of care. And the fry tank itself, if once we've separated the babies out from the parents, typically the, the fry need a very, uh, they need a, a sustainable uh, environment to, to live in and the best way to do that is to provide an aquarium with a sponge filter a basic heater and then minimal decorations so you can do regular water changes that's right as you get into fish keeping one of the things that you're going to find is uh, a major factor in being successful is regular water changes it's going to be very important it could be uh, 10 to 20 percent two to three times a week uh, regular feedings of two to four times a day of different types of very micro fine powders to small vinegar eels, micro worms, even baby brine shrimp can be required for the care of your baby fish. Uh, and it's going to be for sometimes for a few days to a few weeks in, in that case. Two to three times uh, a day is not uncommon for, for fry fish. And that kind of concludes everything that we're, we were going to discuss here, here today and gives you a, a brief introduction to what we're going to be discussing as the program uh, continues on here. Here are some references used in this webcast and certainly we'll have additional references here in the future. 
And um, these are great resources. Well, you know, you can get a lot of these resources online, uh, such as websites. When it comes down to it, books are still the fundamental key for, for knowledge. Mm -hmm. One of the things we'd like to do is have for you to have, be able to reach out to us and contact us. The comments are turned on uh, the, our website at uh, thefishkeepershow.tv. That's fishkeepershow.tv. Leave your comments. We'll be happy to respond to you after each episode.